This game did not get competitive until the very end, so does this make this the greatest final match ever? <laughs> Let's go. What's up everyone, my name is Chris and I make fun reviews for movies and more. And if you're new to the channel, then I appreciate if you consider clicking that subscribe button. So this review is from the perspective of a guy whose first love of sports was actually soccer or what the world calls football. But since I live in America, I'm gonna be basic and call it soccer. But I was the man, I was that dude when I was 10 years or younger playing soccer. But every kid probably says that, right? But I do remember I had skill, but after 10 and older, I switched everything up to play basketball only going forward. Now I know how hard it is to play the game at a certain level if you take it serious. But as time went on, I did forget some of the the rules and how exciting it is to watch the game. I don't keep up with the game or the players, so I'm definitely not a hardcore fan whatsoever, right? But I, I am familiar with the top names, such as Ronaldo, Messi, Messi, you know, you know what I mean. They say he's the GOAT, but I'm here to confirm as an outsider if he's the real deal. I hope this review is fun for people who love the game, but also informative for people such as myself who only watched soccer pretty much every four years during the World Cup. It appears the first World Cup was back in 1930 and it's part of the Olympic Games. The sports organization that manages all these teams competing is FIFA, which stands for the International Federation of Association of Football. Every four years, the FIFA World Cup is held in a different country. So this year it was in Qatar, which is in the Middle East right next to Saudi Arabia. Here are five quick interesting facts about the new location for this World Cup in Qatar. This was actually the first World Cup held during autumn to avoid Qatar's summer heat, since every other time was held in May, June, or July. This is the first World Cup held in the Arab world and the second World Cup held in Asia. This is the most expensive World Cup ever, costing around 200 billion US dollars. Qatar is the smallest country to host with a population just under 3 million and a land area of 11,500 square meters. And this is the first time that female referees will officiate men's World Cup matches. You also can't deny of how beautiful that stadium is and such a great job they did. Speaking of great job, let's just get right into it. Let's talk about how great both these teams performed. So if you watched the entire match as I did, then you pretty much saw that Argentina had control most of the game offensively until the very last 10 minutes of the game but this entire match as you were watching it looked like france just had no urgency at all to win this game at least offensively and you can't deny that argentina was hustling after every play to remain aggressive to get as many shots off as possible it's almost as if france's strategy was to just be half as lazy the entire game and then turn up the heat full blast during the last 10 minutes of the match but what i love most about this game from an outsider's viewpoint is that there was a story behind the teams the players and the staff on one hand you had argentina who had a head coach that was a first-time head coach for the team and then you had france who won the last World Cup so if they won this year it would have been a repeat which would have been historic since the last repeat hasn't happened in over 60 years but at the center of it all you had two legendary players fighting for football legacy Argentina has Lionel Messi which everyone probably heard of including myself but then you have this other younger guy on the French team whose name is Kylian Mbappe who is only 23 years old and is considered the next greatest of all time and with that being said he's also two-time French player of the year but speaking of the GOAT right the greatest of all time Messi is considered the greatest of all time however the the big story behind this match is that somehow some way and this is shocking to me since i don't really follow soccer he never won a world cup before i mean due to all this guy's accomplishments this guy's got trophies for days he has yet to win a world cup for his home country argentina when i heard the stat i, I almost couldn't believe it because you hear his name everywhere like damn how has he not won a world cup even argentina the team right you always hear about argentina they're one of the best teams ever knowing all this now i had absolute respect and confidence in messi to win so i was definitely rooting for him and the reason why this is so hyped up because i guess he's getting older and this could be his last world cup plus i'm not sure if most of you knew since i didn't but as talented as this guy is <laughs> he's only five seven and weighs 148 pounds he's also 35 years old and a shoe size 10. <laughs> Hello, I relate to this guy, right? He He's part of my generation. I mean, I am taller than him, but growing up, I was always one of the shorter guys. But he actually had growth hormone deficiency, which stopped his normal growth rate at the age of 11. But when you watch this guy play, you can see why he's considered the GOAT, because he put that time and dedication into his craft, despite any disadvantage. He's one of those players where every time he gets possession of the ball, you get excited because you know he's going to do something special. He almost reminds me of LeBron James. Whether GOAT or not, he perfected the skills of the game. Some people may not notice, but as for fans and athletes, we appreciate the details of the game and the skill. You know, it's not so much about actually scoring in the game. It's how you set up your teammates, how you pass, how you strategize. Those little details help you win. And after winning this World Cup, he's definitely at the top of the list in regards to the GOAT conversation. If not that, then he's definitely the GOAT of Instagram because they just announced he has the most liked pitcher with over 63 million people. I mean, he pretty much contributed to every major play of this game. I couldn't believe that second goal Argentina had on the fast break. I don't know if fast break is strictly a basketball reference, but <laughs> I'm gonna use it. Before this, 
this, they had the penalty kick that Messi scored for the team. And what's crazy about this game is that France also had a similar two-way goals. Even France had their penalty kick score from their main star Mbappe. And then just two minutes later, the same player scored again with a crazy turnaround sequence. I think this might actually be a record for back-to-back -back scores by one player. The way he was able to kick the ball without hesitation before it hit the ground, <laughs> I feel like I'd never seen before. He was quiet the whole game, but then unleashed out of nowhere with just under 10 minutes left. So I could see why he's considered the next GOAT. This guy was so impressive that he even scored a hat trick. He scored three goals in one game. And the last time this was done was over 50 years ago. And both goalies for each team did amazing all the way up to the final end of the game. You've seen it towards the end, it got super crazy where teams were going back and forth trying to score. Even the goalie for Argentina, you could argue that he had the best play of the game because he stopped that fast break. If France would have scored, that's it. It would have been game over with just a few seconds left. But I forgot that before the penalty shootout that the teams go into overtime, two sessions, 15 minutes each. One of the craziest yet slightly confusing goals I've ever seen was in overtime when Messi kicked the ball in the goal. However, the France defender was inside the goal and he kicked it out. But however, if the ball crosses the line, it's kind of like football where it still counts. And that was just insane. But in overtime, both teams fought to the end, including Mbappe. This guy was crossing people up left and right to get one final shot off with just a few seconds left. Like all of us, right? My heart was racing. It was crazy. And as you know, this game went to a final penalty shootout. And this is the most intense part of the game. This is where everything counts. If it's your turn to kick and you miss your kick, if you miss your shot, that's it. <laughs> There's no turning back. This is the third World Cup final in history to go to a penalty shootout. I'm not sure about the other shootouts in history, but this one, for me, it appeared to be very intense. Can you imagine how loud it was in that stadium with 88,000 fans screaming at you? I mean, that is so much pressure built up for these players. In the end, Argentina won the final shootout with a score of 4-2, to two, and you could tell immediately how emotional the players, the staff, the fans were after winning this game. And from a casual fan just watching the World Cup, the Olympics, it was just so heartwarming to see because you know when it comes to the Olympics and sports, how much time and effort they put into these moments. Even the announcers were saying that this is the greatest World Cup final match in history. So if you're here with me, before we wrap up this review, I wanna give you another 10 interesting facts about the World Cup. Conclusion with 64 matches in 28 days leading up to the grand finale that had all of us at the edge of our seats, this World Cup was definitely one for the ages. I know soccer, or what the rest of the world calls football, is the world's most popular sport, but since I don't follow the sport, I'm not sure if Argentina is the better team, but it was obvious they played the better game. Since France was stagnant the entire game up to the last 10 minutes, I was going to say overall this match had good vibes, but with the amazing comeback from France providing a roller coaster full of emotions in overtime into the final penalty shootout, well, we should all agree that this FIFA World Cup final was absolute hype. They playing soccer in my backyard. I think I see Messi and his money could never neglect. Come on, man. 
That's too easy. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see more, just subscribe. If you want notifications for new uploads, hit that bell icon. Also, if you could share this video with your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.